Hello and welcome back to the Digital Marketing Podcast. My name is Kieran Rogers. I'm Louise Crossley. And I'm Daniel Rolls. And today we are talking about the Digital Marketing Toolkit Part 2. If you listen to the last episode, you know we are doing the Digital Marketing Toolkit Awards. Uh, lots of you have been voting, submitting tools. Uh, we have now shortlisted all of the categories and we've just done two episodes going through all of those tools. There are some familiar ones in here that a lot of you will know, but there's a lot of new ones. And that's been a really interesting thing for me. It's like how much new stuff has kind of come up in here as well. Also, with the voting, just to give you an update on this as well, you can really see that some tools are leveraging their communities and their friends their mum and dad and then when else to get <laughs> voting and probably using 24 different gmail addresses and various other things but you know that's all to be encouraged so um go through and get voting uh if you want to vote yourself targetinternet.com forward slash awards it will take you less than two minutes and you will be putting a prize draw for a year's free membership to target internet so well worth going doing and just kind of support those tools that you love it's fun so. grab a cup of coffee and a biscuit and submit your favourite. Yeah, and all yeah. the tools we're, we're listing today, they're all linked to from there as well. So you'll be able to get access to all the tools if you're not familiar with them as well. And you'll all have received um, some social sh sharing assets as well. Yeah, so all of the tools. Them. Yeah, we've sent out so you've got stuff you can share and all that kind of stuff as well. So let's go through the rest of the categories. Uh, as before, Louise is going to take us through them and then we'll, we'll comment on what we think about the tools, what they do, in case you're not familiar. If we mention one tool more than others, we're sorry. But if you don't like it, go vote. You can vote for the toys that you do love. So let's go email, automation, and personalization is the next category. So what have we got in this one, Louise? So shortlisted in this category, we have Fluent CRM, HubSpot, Litmus, Nutshell, Salesforce, and Zapier. Okay, so really interesting. You've got the like, you know, HubSpot, one of the big <laughs> ones. Tool that we use with that we love. Great customer relationship management system, email service provider, automation platform, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, we're good friends with HubSpot. Um, I am off to Inbound 23 in a couple of weeks as well. Mm. I'm very excited about. Uh, so, you know, really big familiar. But in there as well, Fluent CRM. Now, I hadn't heard of Fluent CRM. Unsurprisingly, it's a CRM. It's a customer relationship <laughs> management. But I've been speaking to some of the people from Fluent who went through and nominated this. And they said, look, we're, we're in a world of Salesforce and HubSpot, the two big mm. kind of tools. But we're trying to be a competitor. We've got a really good development roadmap. Uh, and actually, they're a really responsive team. So I'm interested in that whole piece around, you know, with HubSpot, I love HubSpot, but it's a bit of an immovable force in that it's such a big company that if you want a feature, it, you know, it might be on a development list for five years. Like with the call to actions mm -hmm. for ages, but oh, the call to action functionality is no good. We need better functionality. Suddenly they just launched it randomly. Um, but with Fluent, you know, they're speaking to their customers more. They're a small organization. So it'd be interesting to find out what you think. Would you vote for the big players? Would you vote for the smaller one? What well, would you like? I think what's interesting about Fluent is they've carved themselves out a really nice nice niche. So they're, they're very much specialized on WordPress websites. Yeah, right. So it's effectively, from what I can understand, it's a plugin that gives you CRM functionality within WordPress. And actually, I think for a lot of small organ and medium and sometimes quite large organizations, that could that could work particularly well. Like it's one less thing to have, isn't it? And actually in terms of integrating your website with your CRM, which gives so many big like possibilities when you've done that, you know, I, actually up until that point, you had to go down the realms of you know, HubSpot or Salesforce yeah. or one of these big players. Actually now, you know, not clearly not so much. And you say it's a niche. I mean, it's 40% of the world's websites pretty much, isn't well, it? It's I a know. pretty decent yeah. sized yeah. niche as well. Yeah, it is. That's a great yeah. point. So yeah, so have a look at that one. Um, Litmus. Litmus is always one of your favourites, isn't I it? I love Litmus. It's so it's an email service provider platform. It's not really a set. It kind of does a bit more than be an email service provider. So talk us through Well, Litmus. they don't really, but they're actually, I don't think you can send emails right. via yeah. Litmus. They're not really, but they're in that space. So yeah, that's they give what I mean. You, it's sort of advanced email analytics. Um, and it's just so good. Like they've, they've got a ton of stuff that will help you work out why certain more advanced email codes don't work on different, like, app combinations yeah right so you've got things like okay if a user is using a gmail account on the uh, apple mail app how does it look you know litmus have got like 30 of these um so you can generate previews of your email on all of these um and that's that in itself is hugely useful um but also they'll give you much more advanced analytics if you put a little bit of code into your emails when that goes out you get a ton of data back on okay 
what email addresses are using which platforms. So if you want to find out how many Gmail addresses yeah, do right. we actually have, um, obviously, you know, anybody can create, like businesses can have a custom domain as a Gmail address if they're using the whole Google Apps um, uh, kind of infrastructure. So, uh, yeah, I've just always loved it. I mean, disclaimer, I once wrote to them to tell them how much I love them. And they wrote so like back. you a fanboy. Yeah. No, I, I didn't know this. I am. No, I, I should come clean on this, really. Wow. I, literally, I love you so much. I think what you do is amazing. And I just want to say thanks. And they sent me a really short email back saying, what's your T-shirt size, Kieran? And what's your address? And I told them, and a T-shirt. Uh -huh. Popped up like two weeks later. It's still a very, very prized possession. It's only only bought out on special occasions. Do you know what's like. interesting though? You, you said yeah, it's a t-shirt, right? Yeah. But it, that little gesture makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, do you know it's a bit more than that? Cause it's a flipping cool t-shirt. Like right. a lot of the branded t-shirts, they're just rubbish. You wouldn't want to wear them. But this one is Quite nice. is cool. Okay. Yeah. So that's a good. I mean that 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 whole thing of non-digital stuff. Yeah. We're actually getting. Yeah, this is quite. I have to give you into this. We're getting, we're getting <laughs> mugs done at the moment, right? Um, and we sent off an initial couple of designs. We got them. We were like, nah. I love the mug. So we've gone big. Oh, right. So you know, not, not not sports like direct. Pint, big. Not pint. Have you seen a sports direct mug? Is this yeah, yeah. like okay, pint and a half. Not that mug, big. Yeah. Right, okay, but yeah, it feels like good bone china, but it also feels like it's a huge size. So you've got that. But we kind of thought you don't want it to be like branded, branded. It, it no. needs branding on it, but you don't want that to be the main it's focus. Subtle. Yeah. So anyway, in our kitchen at home. Um, what we're actually seeing is that there are mock-ups, but not just like graphic design mock-ups, actual printouts. We're sitting there printing out, cutting them, yeah. sticking them yeah. onto the mugs. Like, <laughs> Look at this one and so on as well. So it's turned into a bit of a cottage industry in our kitchen at the moment. But I think there's a really important point there. Advocacy, yeah. massively important. Yeah. Small gestures, offline stuff makes a big difference. I wanted to put a QR code on the bottom of the mugs to flip it over and scan it. You're going to get a video of me going, you've just... Burnt yourself. Burnt yourself with yeah. tea. Yeah, what were you doing? Great. That's what you need. A mug that told you I told you, so you're an idiot. Yeah, great. Just going back to Litmus quickly as well. It's yeah. worth <laughs> Let's get back on track for a minute, shall we? It's worth checking whether they um, connect to your email service provider because we use HubSpot and it's quite hidden, but you can actually use Litmus within HubSpot to check your emails okay. before they're going it, out. It integrates with... Most. The other thing I would yeah. just say yeah. Litmus is the fact that actually... Um, they do the best reports on email. They're constantly putting out great data on email marketing. Um, so, I, yeah, I really the rate that. podcast is good too. I haven't listened yeah. to that. Okay. Yeah. They don't always, not always as regular as I'd like it, but okay. yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, moving on, Nutshell. Nutshell is another CRM, another small CRM. Uh, their focus is, it seems to me they're leaning more towards the kind of sales management as well as marketing side of things. Again, spoken to them, small player, trying to compete, but, you know, again, customer service seeming to be their really kind of key thing. And they've got a really good uh, development list of kind of new functionality they're building in. So again, I want to see how these small, smaller kind of CRM systems, because I think we need, you know, lots of us will use HubSpot and Salesforce and they're great, but I think there's definitely room for more players in the market a little bit as well, just based on the cost and everything else. Definitely on the cost, like not all organizations can afford the HubSpot, Salesforce price tag as much as i and I, guys not it's my, it's my i do big... love what you do but boy do the prices get big and i know that certain points in the year you give massive discounts but still the prices are eye-wateringly large yeah. if you're a small small business yeah hubspot is our big one of our big bills mm -hmm. so yeah it's interesting um salesforce is in there They're no, no big surprises <laughs> um salesforce brilliant my challenge always with salesforce is that you got it and then you've got to set it up and there's a lot of work to get it integrated but when it works it works it's great you, i mean you used to do a lot of stuff with sales still right? do i mean still use it still Brilliant. still still love it yeah i think it's just so big it does so yeah. many things it's 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 a solid workhorse but with that comes all sorts of complications and, yeah. and complexity so i think you know it, again for you, you can never be all things to all people mm. and i think that's what we're seeing within the marketplace um, you know, big like multinational organizations, of course, they're going to love something like a HubSpot or a, or a Salesforce. But I think for smaller organizations, yeah, there's, there's, there's space to play there. Yeah. I mean, we've got an interview of HubSpot coming up uh, after inbound this year as well. So Salesforce will get on as well. We've got some people mm. we know at Salesforce. We'll get them on and get them talking about where they're going with things as well. Um, and then the last one in this category, which is, it's kind of interesting. It turned up in this category because it was nominated, but you could have put it in a lot of places, Zapier. Zapier allowing you to connect things to other things. So you can say, when we get a lead in our CRM, um, go through, trigger a message to someone and then put something into our Slack uh, that notifies the team and all those kind of things. I'm finding Zapier particularly interesting at the moment because of all the kind of AI tools and they're all quite disparate and disconnected. 
and you can use it for connecting up some of those tools at the moment. Uh, but also they have built some AI functionality into Zapier that you just describe what you want it to do and it will build the connectors on the basis of the description that you've given it from that point of view. So some really clever stuff going on at that moment as well. What you tend to find is when you haven't got an API for something, it may be that you can get Zapier to do it for you. There'll be a zap. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you can put a zap together based on that. So some really interesting tools in there. So it'd be interesting to hear what everyone thinks about those. Um, mobile, right. I have this dislike of the word mobile marketing, which is slightly ironic, bearing in mind I wrote a book called Mobile Marketing, <laughs> which still does pretty well. But it's this whole thing. It's not a separate thing, and I don't like separating it to some extent. But we use it as a category because there are some mobile-specific technologies. Okay. Um, I mean, QR codes, I'm only going to say this once more, but Kieran was obsessed with QR codes for like 15 years, I'm going to say. And for the next 15 years, you're going to gloat. I am going to gloat. Right. Because I was, Cause you, we just you gave him such a hard time about it. We were pretty, pretty rude about it the whole time. And then suddenly, COVID, I mean, it took a pandemic for you to be right. I know, right. So let's, let's, let's kind of be, be fair. <laughs> uh, but they have really taken off again now because it's built in. So um, let's look at the mobile category. There's a couple of lovely tools in here. So the yeah. first one, Bitly. I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with Bitly, URL shortener. Uh, gives you tracking, so it can be used a number of different ways. You put URL and gives you a short version, and you can put your uh, URL parameters behind it so it tidies up links, but it also generates QR codes as well, which I wasn't really aware of until recently. And that's just kind of nice because you've got one place you can track those links, but you can also track your QR codes from that place. So that's lovely. It, it's more than that, though, and I'm going to big something up because I don't think enough people are paying attention. We've all got free Bitly accounts. Mm. You can do so much more if you pay for a Bitly account. So first off, you get unlimited analytics whereas with the free account it's only like looks back over the last Probably 30 yeah. days but some of the things i love you can it, and it's not a huge amount like it's 28 29 which is what's that it's about 22 pounds a month if you pay for that level of bitly you get the ability to have your own custom shorten url yep right so you know you could be daniel rousley <laughs> Okay. <laughs> at, uh, at forward slash. Uh, uh, now, a lot of people aren't customizing the back end of their Bitly mm. links either. And my tests have always shown that if you do that, particularly if it's linked to you know what's in it for me, if I click on this, you, you rather than random codes, put some specific words in there that are linked to yeah. what you're promoting. You always get a higher click-through rate. And actually, if you've got a nice branded shortened URL, I just think that lifts it. A well, there's actually higher. something I was yeah. talking to about this recently. A lot of companies are getting cybersecurity training and they're telling them don't click on bit.ly links because you don't know where it's actually linking to. Mm. Now, I'm not sure I entirely agree with that because any URL could do that yeah. to some extent. Yeah. Um, but if that is a forward onto a forward. And, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. So it's not to really. But what I would say is that if you've got your own custom domain, it gives people a little bit more like they, you know, more they're authority. more comfortable with it, has yeah. a bit more authority. Yeah. It. It's and it's important. essential for kind of masking your tracking codes, really. The like, last yeah. thing you want to have is long, spurious tracking code yeah, right. in, in social emails. So, yeah. Um, in social emails? You just made up <laughs> a whole new email. channel. Yeah. Social and email, we're so, going to call it. Social and email. I like email. it, though. Yeah. Social emails. The two merged together in my head. Yeah, fine. Well, you've always said that email is a social channel. It is. So there you go. There you go. It's just become it in your brain. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's let's move on. Um, browser stack. I love browser stack. I've been using it for ages. Browser stack allows you to simulate what your website's going to look like in lots of different browsers, but not just at that resolution. It actually runs it in that browser and then kind of mirrors it onto your screen. So really good for testing. I mean, I, I think it's a great tool from that point of view. Um, does a lot more than that as well, but definitely worth playing around with. Uh, this next one I hadn't really come across, the Moby Ready uh, website as well. Have you been playing around with this one, Kira? Yeah, yeah, it's good. And it enables you to just test your content, doesn't it? See how it looks. Yeah, and it's free. So it's a it's a it's a kind of quick version um, of going through, and you don't you, even before you registered, you can go through and you can you can test it out, and it will go through and give you a score. Uh, it will tell you if there's any problems. It kind of benchmarks you, and if you sign up, you get additional kind of features um, and some some benchmarking and so on as well. So I think it's definitely worth a look. It's not one I was familiar with, but it's definitely worth kind of looking at. Um, and then the last one, which is interesting because I I hadn't realised this in Kira's office. So this is this is QR code generator. Um, and QR code generator, I think you were telling me, is now owned. Yeah, they Bitly. A Bitly bought it, and since buying it, they've been doing a ton of stuff better with with QR codes. Uh, we we actually had them, we had them on the yep. podcast. We interviewed them, and I think, I mean, I, I 
I did it partly to annoy you. <laughs> Back in the, the anti-QR yeah, code. Yeah, anti-QR day. All right, I'm going to get, get a really good interview with someone who really knows this space. Um, but what I, I learned loads fr from them. You know, I love that the simplicity of how they explained it to me was, look, a QR code is literally a magic button you can put on anything. Did they sell you some beans? No, well? they didn't. They didn't. They should have. Um, but, you know, when you start to think about QR codes as a magic button, and he made the point to me, look, are you, you know, have you told people what that button does? So, you know, if I, Louise, if there was a big red button there and I said, there's a big red button, would you press it? Probably. Yeah. And, and then I say, yeah, but you could have just bought on World War III. Uh, oh, it's, it's important that you know what a button mm. does before you press it. And, and that was one of the things that he was like, yeah, make, right. it, make it clear within the QR code. Um, but so I, what, what's amazing about that platform is it goes way beyond just pure web addresses and you can send micro payments. You can have a QR code if I scan it, I can trigger the Wi-Fi using yeah. um, a, like network name and password. Like, why on earth, like businesses the world over aren't using those QR? Can literally scan it and I'm connected. It's really, really good. Um, and in That's a way, the graphic keeps... design stuff as well, isn't it? So you can yeah. design the colors and the logo and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. a ton, well. ton of stuff. And they do dynamic um, codes, which again, I think it's something you can now do with the with the paid version of Bitly, where. You know, one of the problems with a QR code, like you set it up and it's forever tied to that web address with that tracking code. With the dynamic ones, you can go into the back end and just mm -hmm. tweak where yeah. that QR code is. Now, for, for packaging and stuff like that, that's that's brilliant. And I know you can do it with like setting up redirects and stuff, but this is just so much cleaner, mm -hmm. so much cleaner. So yeah, check it. Check Some ethical it out. things just to raise with that one as well, because if you say to someone the QR code goes somewhere mm. and then you change it halfway through, there's all sorts of misinformation things that people are using them for as well. Mm. So just to flag it, mm. yeah, just be aware of it. Um, right, some nice little tools in there, some mobile kind of tools. Uh, let's move on to the next category, which is online advertising. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Louise, talk us through online advertising shortlist. So the shortlist of tools for online advertising are Adespresso, adcreative.ai, Adzuma, Benilio, and Wordstream. Okay, so let's go to, first of all, Adespresso, uh, I was convinced was Adespresso. <laughs> And I didn't realise I've you know just had, I know how to spell it now. I know the it. So I think it. I've called it Adespresso. Yeah, I was pretty much. I think yeah. that's what I've called it as well. So anyway, yeah. Adespresso. Adespresso. Um, been around, been around for a while. Have you used Adespresso? I use it a lot. Oh really? Okay. I don't like the Meta Ads interface, right. and I don't like the fact they keep on changing it all the time. And and I love Adespresso because it doesn't like it just interfaces with it. You showed it's, me this tool as well. It's it? really good for creating multivariant tests. Um, and actually different videos, different visuals in your ads make all the difference. Um, and with this, it makes it a doddle to set up, you know, 15, 20 different variations if you've got the budgets, daily budgets to support that. So, yeah, no, I, I, I love it. I love it. And it'll make smart decisions on my on my part. So, you know, if, if I've got 15 different variations, it'll start to turn off the ones that are statistically yeah. dragging their heels a little bit. And that's really good as well. So I think it's like well worth having in place if you're doing a lot of that. And it's certainly driven a lot of improvement in the campaigns that I've been running on it. Brilliant. Um, adcreative.ai, again, wasn't familiar with this one. This is artificial intelligence generated ad creative. So they'll go through and they will uh, generate the kind of creative for you and your ads, and then they test it out and um, work out what's kind of working and what's not. I think there's going to be a lot of tools in this space coming up yeah. because Mid Journey, Dali, you know, really great at generating images, but you can then do kind of automatic A-B testing and all sorts of kind of smart stuff in there. So it's quite interesting. And I think it's one of the early ones in that kind of space uh, as well. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. So if you're using it, get in there and get voting for it. Um, Adzuma, I've come across Adzuma quite a few times. And I've never never used it, but it's a load of different tools um, that help you kind of automate your online marketing and do loads of assistance. Yeah, it so. works with um, Google Ads, Bing Ads, and Facebook Ads, and they're constantly adding more to it. It's kind of it's a ton of AI to keep your campaigns optimized. Really, like it, it'll do, it'll go through and it'll check through some of the more obvious um, errors that, you know, if you're not a favorite, it's very easy to end up with multiple campaigns or bidding on the same keyword, for example. And in a complex structure, that could be quite hard to see, but the AI just goes in and finds it. And it can see where you're underbidding and overbidding. Yeah. It so all so it does paid ad stuff. Mm. It does search engine optimization kind of stuff mm. as well. It's also got a load of listings. So if you're listed in certain um, different categories online in different uh, websites. It will kind of check those for you. It looks at your online reviews. It gives you metrics reports. Mm. There's some automation, campaign building stuff. So it's got a huge amount of stuff and it keeps growing as well. Mm. So certainly an interesting one. 
Um, Vanillio was one that I wasn't familiar with as well. Oh, so there's quite a few in this I category. Liking what I see with Vanillio. So the idea is that they're helping you optimize your media spend across multiple channels mm. um, by buying, going through, and, and just essentially just looking at what's working and just optimizing things. But it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X is now called LinkedIn, and they're building in TikTok um, at the moment as well. And I'm really kind of keen on these kind of tools because it's quite easy to run a campaign and we'll do a bit in Facebook, we'll do a bit in Instagram, and then we switch it. And actually, you really need to be going, going, right, let's allocate our budget in a smart way. And that's one of the key things they focus on is those smart budget allocations as well. So I thought, yeah, re really interesting um, kind of set of tools in there as well. Um, and then the last one is WordStream. WordStream been around for a long time. Brilliant paid search uh, tool. I really like all the content that WordStream create. Um, I'm very often reading their reports and their kind of insights. Uh, into things their, as well. Their free tools are really great as well. Yeah, and they've got a lot. Yeah, right? they do have a lot of free, a lot of free tools. tools. Definitely check 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 them out. Yeah, so no, if you haven't looked for a while, go to wordstream.com, go to their free tools because um loads of stuff that you're you're paying for elsewhere. And they've got their ads grade here and all those kind of things built in, haven't they? So um yeah, really, really worth kind of looking at as well. Keyword research tools, I believe, um, and, and other stuff. So uh that's on an advertising category. Uh and then we get into I think what is one of my favorite categories is the search <laughs> engine optimization category. So let's go through the search tools. Talk us through them. So the shortlisted tools for search are Ahrefs, Keywords Everywhere, Listen Notes, SE Ranking, SEM Rush, and Uber Suggest. Some big players in mm. here. Okay. So SEM Rush, you know, the the one of the biggest uh, kind of SEO tools in there as well. Ahrefs, one of the other really big ones in there. Paid for tools can get quite expensive when you go beyond the basics, but yeah, super, super powerful. Both of them have got so much built into them now, like AI writing tools and uh, suggestions for topics and content developer and website audits and all that kind of great stuff. I think with both the tools, you really need to make sure you're getting value from them. Uh, so there's quite a lot of learning involved in both of them. I mean, SEM Rush, you know, we we pay for that, and it's just huge. I'm not even scratching the surface of it, if I'm honest. So it's a, it's a big old tool. But what I was interested to see was SE ranking in there. So SE ranking is kind of snuck in behind the big players, I would suggest. And they they only did certain things at the beginning. You go, well, it's not really a main competitor. They do loads of stuff yeah, now. That and cost-wise, just so affordable. Yeah, right. Like a, a, you use a, this a, a lot, fraction. right? Yeah, purely for that reason. Right. Like as a as an independent consultant, it's hard to justify some of the big price tags. Now, I don't want to be paying 150 200 pounds dollars a month yeah. for a tool that i'm not using all of the time but that i rely on and, and se ranking does it all and actually in the last 12 months and i don't know how they've done this se ranking team i take my hat off to you because they're based in ukraine yeah, yeah right and yet in the last 12 months they have launched so many new um features they've got they've got ai writing content in within if you're yeah. content marketing um they've got some brilliant local seo um tools in there you know doing the sort of thing that yext does with checking yeah. your profiles um consistent across the board and dealing with um reviews and stuff um and the the seo suite is is lovely and actually i put this admittedly this was probably about 18 months ago i put sem rush and se ranking to task. I had accounts in both. Yep. And I looked, I was looking at the size of the database when you do the, you know, the analysis of different yeah. websites um, and backlinks and what have you. And actually SEM Rush was was winning. Like the database was significantly in a lot of cases bigger um than than SEM Rush's work. Oh no, you, yeah. you just said so yeah. SE ranking. Sorry, SE rankings database was 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 okay, bigger. Interesting. Um so yeah, no, I love it. I love it. All the tools that I need are in there and they keep on adding um, more and I'm constantly like in in awe of it, yeah. It's uh, oh, and the other thing I love is you get so on the basic plan that I'm on, I get three uh, license seats. Oh, so it's not like a single seat job. Yeah. So not only is it like a third, like two thirds cheaper, you get three times oh, okay. as, as much from that from that regard. It's 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 great. It's great. I would definitely check it out. Like try. But it if out you don't agree, trial. go and vote for the other one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's the great thing about yeah, this. Yeah, it's disagree. Democratic situation. I mean, if you disagree with me on this, you are wrong. That's just my <laughs> No opinion. bias at all. Um, <laughs> Vote what, and put me in my place. Why, why were there Uber suggests? So Neil Patel's uh, SE, search engine optimization yeah. tool. What's interesting is it started off as a pretty basic tool. Now it's gone full blown. It does a load of stuff now. The free version that you can get into with a Google account. 
So there's like totally free. Then there's the Google account version that's yeah. paid for. Yeah. The Google account version has got loads of good free stuff in there as yeah. well. So a lot of the charities and, and kind of yeah. um, good courses we're working with use that one as well. So if you haven't checked out Uber's Chess recently, I would go and check it out because it has changed quite a lot as well. And he, he's bought um, Answer the Public. He has well. totally changed it yeah. as well. So that's really interesting. So he's buying up those kind of big platforms, doing some smart stuff as normal. Um, he's speaking at Inbound 23. Uh, so it'll be interesting to hear what he's got to say at the moment about he's talking about AI tools. So we'll report back on that one and see what he's got to say. So I know, know the dream with that was always to create something as good as the big suites of tools, but you know, low, low cost. And I think you know, certainly from what I'm seeing, they're 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 nailing that. It's a lot of hand holding with that tool, and I think they've really got a steal on some of the others in terms of how they walk you through it and how right. they in like with a lot of the others you have to go into their various academies and things and yeah. do courses and stuff this has got Whereas it's, built into it's very much it? built into it which i think is quite they've good they've also really speed quickly they've really focused on the interface that's mm. their big change mm. i think from that tool so it was interesting how he's kind of professionalized it that much as well um the other one in here we haven't mentioned so far is listen notes listen notes is a great one for us because listen notes is a search engine for podcasts um and it's nice because it does a good job of it and you can upvote stuff and all those kind of things and it kind of shows them accordingly. So if you haven't ch checked out Listen Notes, I found some podcasts that I've never come across before in there that were brilliant. Mm. So it's worth worth having a look at that as well. So it's, a, it's an interesting tool and just got some nice little functionality. If you're a podcast owner as well, definitely worth getting a podcast in there. Um, it's driving a fair bit of kind of engagement as well. So let's move on to the last category, which is the social media category. So talk us through them, Louise. So the shortlisted tools for social media are Brand24, Brandwatch, Feedly, Hootsuite, Social Pilot, and Sprout Social. So again, I'm really interested in this. The big players are in here. And then there's some smaller ones as well. So Hootsuite, you know, it, it's the one that everyone thinks of um when you kind of think about social media management tools um i should say we have a commercial association with hootsuite because we are their emea training partner so we train their clients okay so there's a bit biased there so i'm uh, about that but sprout social is in there as well sprout mm -hmm. social is one that a lot of agencies use as well mm -hmm. um for managing multiple social platforms and i should say that's what hootsuite does by the way mm -hmm. assuming people know so it allows you to manage your social platforms gives you analytics and those kind of things so those two in there both great platforms really interesting to see that uh, brand watch in there you know kind of the top end benchmark of what a social media monitoring tool uh, does as well big fan of brand watch really really powerful tool looks at hundreds of millions of websites to go through and see where phrases have been mentioned online really 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 powerful um, but you need to know what you're doing because it's a really powerful tool so uh, great to see brand watch in there um, but also brand 24 kind of you know brand watch is expensive right it's a it's a proper enterprise level tool Brand24 allowing you to do social media monitoring at a kind of a smaller kind of scale side of things as well, but actually giving you some really useful reports. Very customizable. Yeah, it's really nice, right? The filters in it are very nice. Yeah. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, big fan in here uh, of Feedly. So if you're not familiar, I'm sure I've mentioned it a dozen times before, <laughs> but Feedly allows you to bring news in from lots of different sources and then categorize it into different groups and then scan through it. And if you want to, you can share it from there as well but it's how I stay up to date with what's going on digital marketing. So I've got a category that's got Google blog, the meta blog, the X Twitter blog, um, all those kind of things in one place. And then you can go through and you can just keep up to date with what's happening in the news in a really kind of easy, easy way. Share it through to your social media, bookmark stuff, all those kind of good things um, as well. So really, really good. Um, other ones in there, social pilot. So social pilot is another social media management tool. Um, trying to differentiate this slightly. It's got some really lovely features like there scheduling and auto scheduling features are insanely good right um I, i'm not a fan of you know pre-scheduling stuff up too far in advance Risky. um yeah it can be but what i found using this and playing around with this for some of my clients is it's been very very good at not only making sure we've got a good spread of evergreen content going out regularly but also that we've sorted out the proper tracking codes in every single post which is so important if you want to measure the ROI on your um, social social media. Um, I also love that they just constantly knock it out of the park in terms of integrating with new platforms mm. as soon as possible because that can be a real fly in the ointment if a new platform comes along and you can't yeah. post to it and you have to do it manually. Yeah, it's kind of what's the point, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, also, the other thing is that um, Sprout Social and Hootsuite have kind of got more expensive. 
Mm. Uh, whereas D have got like a £22 a month and a £37 a month mm. small team. And the small team, that's three people for 37 a month. Mm. So they're, they're doing a similar thing. They kind of found a different price point. And there's a 14-day trial in there as well. So it depends what you want. Um, but but definitely worth kind of taking a look at uh, that one as well. Um, so we've gone through, um, looked at all the different categories. That's all the stuff that's shortlisted. Uh, if you go targetinternet.com forward slash awards, all the links are there. So if you just want to go and play around with the tools, you can do that. If you want to vote, it will take you less than two minutes to go through. I mean, it could take you an hour if you want to sit there and look at every tool one by one. Really considerable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But if you want to just whiz through, you can whiz through in less than two minutes. You'll be put into a prize draw for a year's membership to Target Internet, get all the premium stuff. Um, so go and have a look. Tell us what you think. Get voting. Get voting for your favorite tools. And we will be announcing the winners in an upcoming episode. Please subscribe for more videos like this and visit targetinternet.com for more free digital marketing resources.